what's going on nefarious west here now i've been doing youtube for just over three years and throughout that time i've actually done over 20 collaborations with other youtubers now i love to do collaborations i love having people on my videos i love doing stuff on other people's videos it's just fun working with uh, a different creative mind and uh, just seeing what you can come up with and uh, i just love the crossover stuff it's it's a lot of fun um, so while I'm in between projects and working on some stuff, I thought it would be a lot of fun to share a collection of a lot of the collaborations that I've actually taken part of uh, through my time on YouTube here. So there's probably a lot of them that you've missed since they're on other channels. So I figured, hey, this will be a great opportunity to check out some of the stuff that I've done on other channels and then you can check out those videos and those other channels as well. So. You know what? Let's go ahead. Let's get started. Now, the first collaboration that I'm going to go over is one that I did for Rewind Mike in the summer of 2019, where he had this brilliant idea to cover all of the NES Konami games, where he would have a different YouTuber cover it in just uh, like a short, uh, quick review. So naturally, I was all over that, and I went ahead and chose two Konami games that I love. So let, let's check them out. Now who could forget the ominous tone of this message as day turns to night in the sequel to Castlevania. Simon's quest went the same route as Zelda 2, straying from the formula that made its predecessor such a big hit. Set in an open Transylvanian landscape, Simon Belmont is under Dracula's curse, and in order to remove it, must locate and collect five pieces of the aristocratic vampire to resurrect and then destroy him all over again. Standing in Simon's way are a nefarious cast of ghoulies, plentiful in numbers and vigorous under the accursed moonlight. This time around, Simon finds assistance by the means of numerous villagers and towns scattered throughout Transylvania. Hearts represent currency in this adventure, allowing you to purchase items and upgraded weapons to aid you in recovering Dracula's body parts from mansions reeking of malevolence. Castlevania II's departure from its traditional platforming predecessor for years has divided hardcore fans over which formula works best. Simon's Quest is riddled with cryptic puzzles to solve, money to manage, and has a boss or two to dispose of. One thing that will always be agreed upon, however, is the fantastic soundtrack with gothic elements that mirror the adventure's dark and beautiful environment, which at the time, no one could deny, was some of the prettiest on the NES to date and the password system allows Simon to return at any time to finally put an end to Dracula's oppressive reign. Love it or hate it, Simon's Quest is undeniably one of Konami's top NES classics. The Adventures of Fire Billy is a game that people either love or hate. Raging Cage and Billy West must rescue his beloved Annabelle from the evil clutches of God Daddy Gordon in this action-adventure hybrid. There's plenty of gun fighting, car action, and street fighting in the bayou and on the streets of Nolens, with a brutal difficulty level that will challenge even the most seasoned of gamers. Gordon's loyal goons attack mercifully, showering Billy with bullets and even running his jeep off of the road, not to mention the occasional fist fight with man-eating gators. Bayou Billy is a balls-to-the-wall adventure that will, without a doubt, leave you gritting your teeth in frustration. I guarantee! 1988's Track and Field 2 sets you in the Summer Olympics with a whole slew of events to compete in, with the ultimate goal being to bring home the gold. Fencing, triple jump, freestyle swimming, high dive, clay pigeon shooting, hammer throw, taekwondo, pole vault, canoeing, <gasps> archery, hurdles, horizontal bar, and arm wrestling will keep you busy, all of the while gracing you with excellent graphics and sound, not to mention top-notch voice samples. Qualify. This fun sports title will pump up your competitive spirit and give your thumbs a workout. Turbo controller recommended. Go for the gold, baby. Ugh, man, that's some cringy stuff. <laughs> you can definitely tell that uh, that was some of my earlier stuff that I did for YouTube. So let's look at something a little more modern, something that I did last summer for Solid Nate. So he came up with the idea to talk about our favorite platforming games, and with just so many to choose from, this was definitely going to be fun. So let's see what I chose. 
Now you can't talk about great platformers on the NES without mentioning a particular Sunsoft game. Batman. Batman on the NES is hands down one of the best platformers on the renowned 8-bit console and unquestionably epitomizes what great platforming is all about. The Game Crusader is able to traverse the dark streets of Gotham with the help of a nifty wall jump similar to that of Ninja Gaiden. With tricky jumps that force you to think outside of the box in order to ascend higher platforms, Batman cleverly utilizes exceptional level design which translates into a completely fun and challenging experience, even with a few sections of certain stages that can be exploited to uncover shortcuts. Contributing to the delinquency of minors. Yes, Robin, this game often contributed to my homework being ignored, as it took dedication to finally be able to take down the Joker and his cronies. But naturally, the Dark Knight has many tools at his disposal to make the arduous trek to the green-haired goon much more manageable. Where does he get those wonderful toys? This game simply kicks ass. Another great NES platformer is where a group of teenagers have to take down the vile Freddy Krueger. That's right, Nightmare on Elm Street, baby. Originally planned as a game where you take on the role of Freddy Krueger in an attempt to hunt down pimply-faced teenagers, Nintendo balked at the idea, and what we got instead was a really fun and challenging platformer. Good call, as this game is fantastic. While yes, the game does adorn that infamous rainbow warning you to stay the hell away, A Nightmare on Elm Street was actually developed by Rare, so you can go ahead and breathe a sigh of relief. In it, you play as a group of teenagers who, reminiscent of the Dream Warriors movie, learn to equip themselves with superpowers in order to vanquish the seemingly immortal incinerated child killer. Bones have to be collected in various types of stages such as abandoned houses, a junkyard, cemetery, and of course, the local high school. The hazards are plentiful and require a lot of jumping onto moving platforms and other tricky maneuvers. Once the sleep meter completely depletes, you are then transported into nightmare mode, where the stage then takes on a dark and evil aesthetic, replacing the creatures from reality with more difficult iterations, eventually leading to a confrontation with Freddy himself. This is when you're able to take advantage of controlling your dreams by assuming the roles of various characters, such as ninjas and sorcerers. The game is very platform heavy, but coupled with some floaty jumping mechanics and slippery controls, A Nightmare on Elm Street is peppered with many instances of platforming bullshit. 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 But hey, it's just part of the game. It gets much worse when playing cooperatively with up to four friends. It doesn't diminish the fun factor that is to be had with this one though, as the challenge keeps you motivated to keep coming back for more Freddy hunting. So hell yeah, those are the two platforming games that I chose on that video. If you want to see what the other eight are, I highly recommend checking out this video. So I'll have a link for it in the description below. Now my good buddy Brazzle the Gamer, a guy that I've been friends with on YouTube pretty much since I've started out, uh, he had this great idea to where he would get a different YouTuber to talk about their all-time favorite Genesis game. So for those of you that know me well, it's a no-brainer what my favorite Genesis game is. But with so many other great YouTubers on this video, I knew that I was going to have to make myself stand out a bit from the rest. So here's what I did with mine.
Now, sometimes for a collaboration, all you need to do is lend your voice talents, which I've also done several times. Like when I voice an alien on my buddy Andrew from Retro Island Gaming's Halcyon review video. Barely acceptable human commander, we give grudgingly welcome to your arrival. Now that the ceremonial greeting beratement is out of the way, there are a few things we need to discuss. Important things. Important? I don't have time for this. Or when I lent my voice for Gajillionaire's Nintendo Power giveaway video, uh, you probably know his show is GTV. Hey, Nefarious West here, and do you guys remember that time that Nintendo Power had that contest where you could actually appear as a character in a comic? Issue 20 from January 1991 gave one lucky winner the chance to appear as a character in a Nintendo Comic System graphic novel published by Valiant. It's not quite the same as getting your name in a game, but your likeness could appear next to Mario, Link, or Captain N the Game Master. Or even the most famous comic character of them all, Nestor. Plus, Nintendo will give you a few extra copies of the book to show off to your friends to prove that it actually happened. Yeah, you don't need to say it's at your uncle's house right next to his hoverboard. You could prove that it was real. Man, I've even done full-out reviews for some people, like my buddy Dubious Gaming from Dubious Gaming Online. So for his NES chronology series where he covers every Nintendo game from start to finish, when he got to Metroid, he really didn't want to play through it. He didn't want to get the footage for it. So I volunteered and hell, I ended up doing the whole thing. So here's some samples from that video. Developed and published by Nintendo, Metroid starts protagonist Samus Aran, a space bounty hunter isolated within a world inhabited by cosmic space pirates. Discovering new items will often allow passage through previously impassable areas, so backtracking becomes commonplace. The thrill of uncovering new ground was one of Metroid's most alluring traits. While unquestionably a game changer for action adventures back in 1987, and a linchpin for a whole new subgenre, Metroid has unfortunately by today's standards become obsolete. Man, and whose bright idea was it to do a four-way no-death run of Gradius 2 on the Famicom? God, I still want to slap the shit out of whoever came up with that idea. But damn it, we did it. Brazzle the Gamer, Shmup Master, Bug Doctor, and I, we all took a pact to get through Gradius 4, no deaths on the Famicom. We all did it, so we put our runs all next to each other and uh, we commentate on it, put together by the Shmup Master. So yes, I'm gonna have to show this intro again. So let's check it out. Yeah, this has to be one of the most difficult stage ones in any freaking game, man. Yeah, it's, yeah it hits you hard right at the start. Yeah, and you know, it, like, it does. Uh, it, yeah, it does, you know, it is pretty... Once you once you memorize it, it's not so bad, but yeah, it is really hard to start out with, for sure. Yeah. But, dang, I was just doing that. That was cool. Yeah, that's a, yeah. That's a good, like... That's good how you do it right there. Yep. That's what I was trying to do and failing miserably. <laughs> I'd see I'd never thought to do that. I might have to try that. Next That's time. how I always yeah. play Gradius. See, watch. Here always we had, oh, yeah. that. See, see I got him a little bit there. I love this track. Man, this music is awesome. I do too. Man. This music <laughs> is really good. <laughs> it is great. I was like, I was like, should I not talk because the music is good? <laughs> Just yeah. let it play. This is like, yeah. this is like some 80s punch dancing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This is uh, this stage is just like the last stage of Gradius, right? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Like right here, 
Oh my no, god, I, can't I was so money. scared. <laughs> I died. I died right there. I think at least once. Oh no, this is the first time I got to this point. <laughs> oh really? This is the first time yeah, you made it here? Wow. This is the first time yeah, I made it Yeah, that shit point. closed on me the first time. Yeah, yeah, yeah me too, way. man. Me too. I should have known because that's a gradient. Learn the hard way. Man, so yeah, that's some crazy shit. Doing a four-way no-death run, and then of Gradius too. Like, man, I've never done anything like that, and uh, <laughs> it's pretty cool. So, um, yeah, anyway, that's just uh, the first snippet of uh, collaborations that I've done ever since I've been doing YouTube. Um, I can throw a couple more of these uh, collaboration videos together. Um, but in the meantime, I got some stuff that I'm working on. I got some stuff cooking. So keep an eye out for that. I appreciate your guys' patience while I get some new content out. Uh, so hopefully this will hold you over for just a little bit. But uh, just keep an eye out. Got some new stuff coming real soon. So until next time, thank you all for watching. Catch you later. The